Hello. Hello. Well, this is our last time together. Last year of the Sunday. And uh, hopefully it won't be our last time ever. Hope it meets for our faith in us again. We know we all have Jesus in our hearts. We weten dat we allemaal Jezus in ons hart hebben. We are all one. En dat we één zijn. And that's going to be forever. Dat is voor altijd tot de eeuwigheid. You know, I really like the Belgian people. Weet je, ik hou echt van Belgen. You're happy. You're happy. You express yourself. You do it yourself. And it's I love it. It's practical. And so I, I honestly feel right at home with you. It's from an act here to this baby. Okay, so we're going to uh, finish off reading Luke chapter two. Dus we gaan de lezing van Lucas 2 afronden deze maandag. Jesus was missing. Jesus was in the middle. 
Where is Jesus? Jesus. And so we uh, we saw how Mary and Joseph began to be concerned. Have we just seen that uh, Joseph and Mary are sort of going to marry? They looked among the relatives and their acquaintances. We had a lot to do with the bekende and the verwante. And at first they were searching, but they were not concerned. En eerst toen ze begonnen te zoeken, waren ze nog niet echt bezorgd. They were thinking, oh, Jesus is here. Ze dachten, hij is onder ons. Jesus is always here. Jesus is altijd bij ons. We don't have to worry. We hoeven ons geen zorgen te maken. We don't have to get hungry to find him. We moeten niet hongerig worden om hem te vinden. But the more they looked, the more they realized that he was not there. Maar hoe langer ze zochten, hoe beter ze beseften dat hij er niet was. And once they realized that he's not there, en toen ze dat iemand beseften dat hij er niet was, they made a decision. Toen trof ze een besluit. An important decision. Een zeer belangrijke beslissing. Nou, ze doen. And they they thought, do I stay with the crowd and just keep going? Or do I turn back and find Jesus? And the decision was: bleef we bij het gezelschap en bleef we vooruit gaan, of keer ons om op zoek naar Jezus? And they said, we're going to find Jesus. 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 And they started looking for three days. And three days of long, sought to find Jesus. Finally, they found him. Tot ze het einde vonden. He was in the temple. He was in the temple. We read, we we read what it says of Jesus there. And we read about what it says of Jesus. Maybe we should read verse forty-six and forty-seven again. Now the verse sixty-eight and seventy-eight is not just written. It is written after three days. Dat ze hem vonden in de tempel waar hij zat, te midden der leraren, terwijl hij naar hen hoorde en hun vragen stelde. Alle nu die hem hoorden, waren verbaasd over zijn verstand en zijn antwoorden. So there's this little gathering in the temple. Dus in de tempel is er een, 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 een samenkomst. It, it says that there were Doctors, dan zitten dus geleerden in een kring. Scholars, schriftgeleerden. People who really know the Bible, the book. Mensen die het boek echt kennen en het geleerd hebben. And they're talking to this little person. En ze zitten daar te praten met een mensje van twaalf jaar. But you have to realize. Moet je beseffen. He's not just a little boy. He's still near than a little boy. He is the living word of God. He's the living word of God. He's not the written word of God. Not the written word of God. He's the living word, the living word of God. These men are supposed to know the scriptures, and the the scriptures are from the start. They're so the scriptures can. They, they're supposed to know the heart of God. Ze zouden het hart van God hier moeten kennen. But they're talking to the living word of God. En dan zitten ze te praten met het levende woord van God. And they're asking him questions. Ze stellen hem vragen. And I, here's how I sort of picture it. Ik beter de zooi. All of these men standing around. Staan daar in die kring, staan bij elkaar. And here's this book. Big Bible. Grote zeer. And they ask that Bible a question. They ask a question on the Bible. And Jesus speaks for He is that Word. He speaks for things they've never thought of. And Jesus gives the answer when they say, "Oh, no, do not answer." I never thought of it like that. And they say, "They see the moment of His answer. So have they never thought of it." And they come to another verse. They go to another verse. And Jesus speaks forth the life of that verse. And from there, that Bible verse speaks Jesus' word, the living word. And they say, I've always known that verse. And they say, I've always known that verse. I've always known that 
staan en kijkt. But I never saw it like that. Maar ik heb het nooit zo begrepen. They're hearing the living word of God. Ze horen naar het leven van God. They're experiencing life coming out of the body. Ze ervaren dat het vanuit het leven leven komt. That's why they were uh, astonished. En dat is waarom ze versteld stonden. They couldn't believe it. Ze konden het niet geloven wat ze hoorden. I said, this is amazing. Ze zeiden, het is verwonderlijk. But it's not amazing. It's God. Maar het is niet, het is geen ongeluk, het is God zelf. It's the word of God as it is in the heart of God. Het is het woord van God zoals het in zijn hart leeft. This is an amazing situation where they're hearing the word in ways that they never thought they would. We zien een bijzonder tafereel dat hij afspeelt in het tempel waar zij de Bijbel, het woord van God, horen zoals het nog nooit gehoord wordt. En dan in vers 48, dan vers 48, let's go ahead and read that. En toen zijn zagen, zijn ouders, stonden ze versteld en zijn moeder zei het op een kind Waarom heb je hem zit aangedaan? Zie je graag en ik zoek een uur met smaakt. Remember that the, the parents, Mary and Joseph, had a problem with keeping their eye on Jesus. Houd tegen gedachten dat Jozef en Maria een steekje hadden laten van door Jezus uit de ogen te verliezen. They had lost sight of Jesus. Ze hadden een kind verloren, Jezus. But now they, they see him in the temple. And you in the temple. Their eyes are back on the living Jesus. But they still have a problem. They still have a problem with the way that they are seeing the situation. And the problem is who should not see the answer. They are seeing Jesus. They see Jesus sitting. But they're seeing him in the wrong way. Maar ze zien hem op de verkeerde manier. What do I mean? Wat bedoel ik daarmee? They're seeing him in relationship to their lives. Ze zien hem in de relatie met hun eigen levens. He is there to be about the Father's business. Maar Jezus is daar om met de dingen van de Vader bezig te zijn. But they don't understand the Father's business. Maar dat begrijpen ze niet. Dat het dat de dingen van de Vader hebben ze geen idee van. They only understand their business. Ze verstaan alleen de dingen van hun eigen zaken. And so they say things like this. En daarom zeggen ze dingen als het volgende. Why did you do this to us? Waarom heb je ons dit aangedaan? How could you put me in a situation like this? Hoe kon je me in dit soort situatie brengen? Jesus, you're supposed to be uh, perfect. <laughs> Jesus, you're meant to be the perfect kind. You're supposed to make my life better. Is all my life perfect? Would you make it? You're supposed to make things more smooth. So I was feeling much better than the last time, but. But look what you've done to me and Joseph. Kijk je toch eens wat mij en Joseph hebt aangedaan. We've looked everywhere for you. We've looked overal naar je gezocht. You've made our lives troublesome. Je hebt ons levens moeilijk gemaakt. In other words, they're saying this. Is eerlijk zijn ze volgende. That they only see him in relationship to themselves. Nou, dat ze hem alleen maar zien voor wie hij is in relatie met zichzelf. Ik ben er even over na. They're only talking about their feelings. Ze hebben het alleen maar over hun gevoelens. They're not talking about the father's business. Ze zijn niet bezig met de dingen van de vader. They're talking about their lives. Ze zijn bezig over hun leven. You you have caused problems in our lives. Now there are Christians that are like that also. We see that there's Christians that are also the same. Jesus is in your home. 
Jesus is in your house. There is a time period where everything is going so nice. Is it my day to day my alles flotjes gelopen? God is blessing. God seeing you. Uh, regularly you say, oh, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, thank Jesus, heel geregeld. Aan me. Because he's a good Lord. Omdat hij een goede Heer is. He is taking care of everything. Hij zorgt voor alles. But one day, maar op een dag, things start changing. Veranderen de dingen. It's, it's almost like Jesus is causing you trouble. Het is bijna alsof Jezus de oorzaak is van je problemen. Jesus troubles the water. Jesus sorts for water. And we begin to question Jesus. And we begin to ask the start of Jesus. Jesus, what are you doing? How do you do it, Jesus? Why would you do this to us? Why would you do this to us? But God loves us. But God loves from us. And His only goal in life is not to make us happy. En zijn doel in het leven is niet om ons gelukkig te maken. His number one goal is to conform us to the image of Christ. Het eerste doel in ons leven is om ons gelijkvormig te maken aan het leven van Christus. En to do that sometimes you have to have a contrast. En om dat te kunnen doen heb je vaak een contrast, een tegenstelling nodig. A contrast between me and Jesus. Tegenstelling tussen jou en Jezus. And things come out of me that don't look like Jesus. En dan komen dingen uit jou die niet op Jezus lijken. Only because I am looking at Him and I see the difference between me and Him. Hmm. En als ik dan naar Hem kijk, dan zie ik het verschil tussen Jezus en mezelf. And when I see Him, I see what's wrong with me. En als ik naar Jezus kijk, dan zie ik wat er aan mij scheelt. And I think. This is not good. En dan besef je, nee, dat is niet goed. And even that happens sometimes when we're starting to go after the Lord, starting to pursue the Lord. En soms gebeurt dat zelfs net wanneer je meer op zoek bent naar de Heer. Let me give you a, a picture, an example. Dan is de woord gegeven. If we were at this end of the room, facing this way, mochten we allemaal allemaal daar staan en naar die uur kijken. And Jesus was at this end of the room. And Jesus is not there. He's not. He's not there anymore. And and let's say that one of us was was starting to move closer to the Lord. And so that one of us took Jesus so we had the name. And His glory is shining forth. And the glory of the Lord shines forth. The closer we got to Jesus, the better the day is for us. The brighter His light would shine. Yes, the better so the light is getting. And the brighter His light would shine, and the better so it's getting. The more I would see my problems. The more better I would see my problems. It's a contrast. That is a very strong contrast. If I stay way back, as I fell back, there's not so much light. That is not so much light. So I don't see my problem. You see that my problem is. But when I start getting close, as I talk to Jesus now, there's more life. It's a new life of my life. You remember what television used to look like? Did you read about who in the future it is? It was the old tube television. For all the big bugs, the old big bugs. And now they have. HD TV. But in the old days, there were beautiful women. Beautiful women, very beautiful. And they looked perfect. And on TV, it was perfect. But with the big screen, but with the screen of the old days, and HD TV, and the old definition, you see all sorts of little things. Yeah, all the little unformatted things on the screen. You kind of go, oh, I thought she was pretty. And then you come away after the boy was. Or let's talk for the women. Let's talk. Let's say something for the women. Now we have women for the girls. Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. Have you ever seen him on HD TV? Have you ever seen him on HD TV? 
you go. That's a problem. You know, we all the You just kind of go, really? You know, is that what you look like? Overall, that for you, you know what I'm I'm trying to make a point. Half the school of the stats is one of the good as a bit of a little school. We think that the closer I get to Jesus, they think that as we dicht komen bij Jezus, the better I'm going to look. That we're going to be the kind of outsider. So, and it's not true. But it is so not. The closer we get to Jesus, the better he looks. But we think that when Jesus comes, we be the Jesus that it is. He's okay on HGTV. He's a perfect guy on the TV. He still looks good. He's a teacher the whole day today. But as we get close, and if we get real close, then that light is really showing up our flaws. And as we come here with Jesus, then the open bar sees us. The open bar sees us. But also, as we get closer, we look into His face. And as we come near to His face, and to Gezicht aan schoon. En we are changed. Dan worden we zelf veranderd. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 says that. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, dan lezen we dat. Vers 18. Vers 18. That as we look into his face. Ze zijn gezicht aan schoon. We are changed from glory to glory. Dan worden we veranderd. Hou het woord tot glory. Hallelujah. So if you're going to get closer to God, dus als we dichter komen bij de Heer, if you're going to start hungering to find Jesus, als we honger beginnen te krijgen om Jezus te vinden, there's going to be some problems. Dan zullen er problemen met daar worden. It's easier to stay way back, makkelijker om de verste weg te blijven, to skip as far as you can, verder mogen van Jezus af. And then you think you're okay. Dan denk je dat je dat oké okay bent. You don't see any spots or blemishes. Je ziet geen vlek of rimpel bij jezelf. Oh, I'm doing good way back here. Ja, je zit hier goed op een afstand. I don't like getting close to Jesus. Je kom hier niet te dicht bij Jezus. Because I see my problems. Want ik daar mijn problemen zie. So I'm happy. Dus ik ben zeker. I'm happy running from Jesus. Ik loop rust van hem weg. But you'll never be conformed to the image of Christ unless you begin to look at His face. And so will you not open for the beauty of Christus. Then you will see His face. Do you think that was clear? Was that clear? Do I need to say it all again? Do I need to say it again? Some of you look a little sleepy. That's the only one you do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wake you up. Zie je wat staat er uit? Ik ga jullie wakker maken. Reis op. Reis op. Precies. Yes. Brother over here from Iran asked me, he said, do you have reis op in America? Want zijn jullie naast me die vroeg, hebben jullie in Amerika reis op? No. <laughs> That's why we're so sad. <laughs> Amen. Okay, we're going to look at this picture uh, in the scriptures a little differently. We have the picture of Jesus in the temple. Dus we zien Jezus zitten in de tempel. En his parents, and they come in and they speak to him. Er zijn ouders komen binnen en lichten het woord op hem. I believe this is a picture of the cross. Volgens mij is dat een beeld van het kruis. The cross. Ja, het kruis. I will explain that in just a minute. Dat is straks in de uitleg. You knew we would have to talk about the cross. En je wist dat dat het op het kruis zou moeten hebben. That's why there's so much room over here. But think about it in this story. Jesus is in the temple. Jesus is in the temple. He is the Lamb of God. He's a Lamb of God in the temple. 
It's Passover. And it's Fast Feast. Where do you find the Lamb of God on Passover? Waar vindt u dan het lam van God deze Fast Feast? You find him in the temple. In the temple natuurlijk. On the altar. Op het altaar. Right? Yes. It's, it's true. Yeah, so is it. So then his parents come in. Now come as an always been. And they begin to lay blame on Jesus. Is it the beginning of Jesus? The beschuldiging. Why did you do this to us? I don't know what's happening. Now remember, he's he's there being about the father's business. Hey, it's not busy. Many things about the father. Just exactly like when he was on the cross. Mm -hmm. En dat was net zo ook toen hij aan het kruis ging. People walked by the cross and looked at Jesus hanging there. De mensen kwamen naar de kruis voorbij en keken naar Jezus. And they saw two thieves on either side of him. Ze zagen twee dieven aan die zijde van hem. They said, look, three criminals. Ze zeiden, kijk, drie misdadigers. He must be a criminal. Hij moet ook wel een misdadiger zijn. And they began to accuse him and to blame him. Ze begonnen hem ook te beschuldigen. But what is he doing? And what does he do? He's dying for our sin. He's dying for our sin. He's taking our blame. He needs all the guilt on him. And so that's what the, that's what his parents are doing. And that is exactly what they're doing to Maria. They're laying all the blame on Jesus. They're guilt on him. You have. Uh, disturbed our happy life. You have not been a good boy. This has hurt my feelings. And oh, it's just like what happened at the cross. And that is net what the rock and the cross. All the blame. All the guilt from the world. All the accusations. All the anklagen. They fell on the land. They came all on the same shoulders to death. The shoulders on the land. And just like at the cross, Jesus hung there. And not so as on the cross, bleed Jesus there. He hung there. He hung there for Mary. He was on the cross for Maria. He hung there for you and I. He hung on the cross for you and for me. And so, in this story, Jesus has just one reply. And in this verhaal hier heeft Jezus ook maar één antwoord. He speaks from his heart. Hij spreekt van het hart. And he says to his parents. En zegt tegen zijn ouders. How is it? But you don't know. I must be about my father's business. Hoe komt het toch dat jullie niet beseffen dat ik met de dingen van de vader moet bezig zijn? What does the What does the Bible say next? En wat staat er daarachter? They understood not what he said. Ze begrepen dat woord niet. They don't understand the cross. Ze weten niet waar het kruis over gaat. Ze don't understand the Passover. Ze begrijpen ook niet waar het paasfeest over gaat. Ze don't understand the lamb. Ze begrijpen niet waar het lam van God. Ze only understand their life. Ze begrijpen alleen hun eigen leven. My life. Mijn leven. Jesus, you're supposed to be making my life happy. Jezus, jij moet mijn leven beter maken. You're doing things that I don't like. Je doet dingen die mij niet gelukkig maken. And we are upset with you. And we are a bit disturbed. Yeah. That's a big old yeah. And Jesus says, I must be about my father's business. He said, I must be about my father's business. When he hung on that cross, to the young cross, he he was about the Father's business. When he said, Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. He bore the blame. He bore the stripes. And he didn't put the blame back on us. And he 
beschuldigde ons niet. Nou, in de story we actually see two different ministries going on. We zien in dit, in dit verhaal twee verschillende bedieningen die aan de gang zijn. We see the ministry of the people going up to Passover to celebrate. We see the beginning of the men to be in that Paschfeest gaan om dat te vieren. What does that ministry involve? What behels the beginning? Singing, praising God. Singing and God eren en aanbidden. Maybe reading the Bible as they go. We see that the people on the way read. But they be loud. How do they say? It it is going up to a wonderful religious event. Is a meeting of optreden and a prachtige godsdienstige gebeurtenis. That's one ministry. That is one sort of meeting. But Jesus has another ministry. But Jesus has another meeting. It's the Father's business, and that's in the Sagen of the Father. Let me give you an example. Ik geef nog een voorbeeld. If Jesus was standing here beside me, of Jesus here next to me, I might say to you, I'm going to minister the word. Dan zou ik kunnen zeggen van, ik ga jullie het woord brengen. Wil je bedienen met het woord? But if Jesus were to speak to you, maar als Jesus zich tot jullie zou richten, he would say. I'm going to do the Father's business. And so he said, "I'm going to do the things of the Father." But he may speak the word of God, and he speaks the word of God, but the word of God. But in his mind, it's not just ministry. But for Jesus, it's more than ministry. It's the Father's business. I'm going to do the things of the Father. Is that is that clear? Do you read the scripture? Jesus does what he does to the glory of the Father. Jesus do what he does to the glory of the Father. Sometimes we put labels on things. Sometimes we give a name. We say, we say, I'm going to, I'm going to preach. We say, I'm going to preach. We say, I'm going to preach. That's ministry. That is a bedi. I'm going to go pray for the sick. I'm going to go to the sick and the sick. That's ministry. I'm going to help out in the kitchen. I can help in the kitchen. That's ministry. But if Jesus did all of those things, now Jesus, these are the things you do. Somebody would say to him, "Well, where are you going?" And so he would say, "Well, Jesus, where are you going to?" I'm going to do the Father's business. I'm going to do the Father's business. Big difference. That is a difference. Difference of understanding. Een verschil van begrip. Difference of motivation. Een verschil in de weegreden. Because he does everything to the glory of the Father. Hij heeft alles voor de eer en de glorie van de Vader. When he does something, he's not just thinking of the of the ministry thing. Als hij als eerste iets doet, denkt hij niet alleen aan de bediening zelf en de resultaten. He's thinking of bringing honor to the Father. Hij wil de Vader eerder. So you say, well, but that's Jesus. But then you say, ah, okay, that is Jesus. I mean, that's the way he is. That is how Jesus is. I agree. Yeah, that is so. But that same Jesus is in us. But this same Jesus is felt in us. In other words, that's how he wants to do it through us. But then we go and Jesus will itself do it through us. He wants to live in us. He wants to live. He wants his mind in us. He will say he's in us. Philippians, thank you. Philippians says, "Let this mind be in you, which is in Christ Jesus." If you want to start, let the work of Jesus, that the Jesus was in you, say. When I was in Bible school and I was young, to be clear, on the day of school, I was still young. Back when Moses was about this tall, the Moses not by so old was. 
The Lord started dealing with me about these things. Begon de Heer met mij over die dingen te spreken. Because I was very zealous to do ministry. En ik was, ik was heel erg ijverig om de dingen te doen. I wanted to to uh, learn to do everything. Ik wilde alles leren doen. Oh, I want to learn to pray for people. Ik wil leren bidden voor mensen. I want to learn to how to serve communion. Ik wil uh, brood leren vreden. I, I want to be able to pray for the sick. Ik wil leren bidden voor de zieken. And it was it was me. It was my zeal for God. Dat was, dat was ik zelf, dat was mijn eigen eten voor God. It wasn't bad. Het was niet slecht. It just wasn't Jesus. Maar het was niet Jezus. But God began to, to talk to me. En God begon met mij daarover te praten. And he began to impress on me the greatness of Jesus. En begon mij te overweldigen van de grootheid van Jezus. He, he spoke to me something like this. Hij zei iets in de mond met dat. Randy, you are a member of my body. Hij zei, Randy, je bent een lid van mijn lichaam. You see this finger? Zie je deze kleine vinger? That has my life in it. Die heeft mijn leven in het. You see this nose? Zie je die neus? My life in it. Mijn leven zit daarin. Jacques' life is not in my nose. Jacques' life is not in my nose. Thank God. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and yet, the, look at the body of Christ. But get this man to think of my If we could, if we could stretch out here and show you hands and fingers and toes. You would see a body. You would see a body. Als we nu alle leden van het lichaam zouden tonen, vingers, benen, armen en zo, en voor je lichaam zien. With one life, it would be a body having one life. En al die verschillende leden van het lichaam zijn maar één enkele leven. But what if my hand one day says to me, uh, I've got an idea. Maar mocht mijn hand nu dag zeggen, ik heb een idee. I think I'm going to go over here and uh, do something over across the room. I'm trying to go this way. And I I go this way. And I go this way. And I go this way. this way. And I go 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 this way. But it's kind of common in some churches. En toch komt dat vaak voor in kerken, sommige kerken. It's like this finger has somebody living in it. Alsof er in de ene vinger één iemand leeft. And this finger has someone else living in it. En de andere vinger leeft iemand anders. And they can't even get along. En ze komen zelfs niet overeen. And they go, hey, give me that ring. Ze zeggen, give me that ring. And then the elbow is saying, uh, I, want, I need to exercise. And the elbow is saying, I need to move. You know, the fingers are going like this, and the elbow is saying, I'm trying to do And then someone looks at the body of Christ. And they see all this going on. And they say, <laughs> <laughs> and They say, That's weird. That's weird. That's weird. That's weird. That's weird. That's weird. the problem then? What is it, the problem is? Too many other people involved in the body of Christ. Er zitten te veel personen hier in het lichaam van Christus. We need one life. Oh. We, we hebben maar één leven nodig in het lichaam. And his name is Jesus. Dat is het van Jesus. And he lives in each and every one of us. He lives in ieder van ons. And we need to we need to do what John the Baptist said. We need to do what Johannes the Baptist said. He said, He must increase. He must grow. I must increase. He didn't say, Oh, it's a good idea. He said, That's all we need to do. Let's 
Saul considered this good idea. He said, he must. Mut. And I moot. <laughs> so, do, do we think the body of Christ, not just here, but um, all over the world, do we think it would get along better if Christ was the life of each vessel? Denk je niet dat het wereldwijde lichaam van Christus beter overeen zou komen als Jezus enige leven was in de kerk? Als alleen Jezus die vader zou vrienden zijn? Paul zei het pretty well in Galatians 2.20. Paulus heeft het daar goed verwoord in Galatians 2.20. You want to read that in the church? I'm making you hold your Bible all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. It's a brief from the Galatians, chapter 2, verse 20. Met Christus ben ik gekruisigd, en toch leef ik. Dat is niet meer mijn ik, maar Christus leeft in mij. En voor zover ik nu nog in het vlees leef, leef ik door het geloof in de Zoon van God die mij heeft lief gehad en zich voor mij heeft overgegeven. I see the light come on and goes, 
Det, det er sødt, det er
daar staat. Het geschiedde na drie dagen dat ze vonden in de tempel waar hij zat, te midden der leraren, terwijl hij naar hen hoorde en hun vragen stelde. En zo, so, Mary en Joseph had turned back to Jerusalem to find Jesus. Maria en Jezus waren dus teruggekeerd in Jeruzalem om Jezus te zoeken. They had decided that even though it looked bad to the rest of the crowd, they were going to go back and find Jesus. De zaal die beslissing genomen, zelfs al wisten ze dat dat geen goede indruk zou geven van zichzelf bij de rest van het reisgezelschap. They didn't enter into Jerusalem like a tourist. Ze kwamen toen jullie zijn niet bij als toeristen. Oh, look at that architecture. Kijk, is dat een mooie gebouw daar? Oh, look, there's a bunch of sheep in the yard. Oh, look at schapen. Oh. In de stad. They, they didn't come back as tourists. Nee, ze kwamen niet als toeristen naar Jeruzalem. Just kind of glancing around. Met de sightseeing te doen. Just looking at verses. Met de versen overlopen en de Bijbel zo. You know, they wanted to find Jesus. Ze waren op zoek, ze waren aan het... Zoeken tot ze zo vinden. I need to find Jesus. Ik moet Jezus vinden. I will not stop until I have the living Jesus. Ik zal niet ophouden of rusten tot ik de levende Jezus gevonden heb. That's the way they came back. Zo kwamen ze terug. That's what was in their heart. Dat was het wat in hun hart leefde. And finally, en dan het einde. They found Jesus. Vinden ze hem. They found Jesus. Ze vinden Jesus. This whole thing was very hard on them. Dat was emotioneel zeer belastend voor hen. Losing Jesus. Jesus verliezen. Looking bad in front of the whole body that was there. Slechte indruk maken op de rest van de gemeenschap. But they made up their mind. Maar ze hadden een besluit genomen. The only thing that is important now, the only thing that is important now, is to find the Lord. That is, to find Jesus. Jesus, find Him. Sometimes it's difficult when you begin to commit yourself. And sometimes it's moeilijk als je je doet op toeleg om hem te vinden. But we have the promise of from from the Lord. Maar de Heer heeft ons ons al beloofd. What are those words? Wat heeft hij ons beloofd? Wie kan het zeggen? Wie mij zoekt, zal mij vinden. Dan, ik ben niet zeker wat dit is. Zit in je vijf? Ja. Ik dacht dat was een goed job. Goed gedaan. Te zeggen, wat als ik hem niet vind, Jezus? Maar wat is ik als ik hem dan niet vind, zal ik hem vinden? Zoek en je zult vinden. Zoek en je zult vinden. Just keep going after the Lord. Blijf zoeken naar de Heer. Just Spend time in the Word of God. Spend your time in the Word of God. Ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to see Jesus. Ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to see Jesus. Ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to see Jesus. Ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to see Jesus. Ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to see Jesus. Ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to see Jesus. Ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to see Jesus. Ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to see Jesus. Ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to see Jesus. Ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to see Jesus. Ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to see Jesus. Ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to see Jesus. Ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to see Jesus. Ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to see Jesus. Ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to see Jesus. Ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to see Jesus. Ask the Holy Spirit to open We remember the words of David. 
But they cannot be ordered on that right. There is one thing that I desire. Even the God's work. Lord Jesus, you are that one thing. Even the Lord Jesus. Lord, we we are willing to leave off the things that we thought were important. Here we are ready to do the things that we thought were important. That we may find your Son in a new way. So that we may find your Son in a new way. So that we may find your Son in a new way. So that we may find your Son in a new way. Lord, like Joseph and Mary, we set our course to to go back and to find Him. Net als Jesus en net als Joseph en Maria, we need to go back and to find Him. Father, for some of us, it's been a long time since we've been radically touched by Your Spirit. Ja, Heer, voor sommigen van ons is het al zeer lang geleden dat wij dat kaal zien aangaan door Uw geest. We have just continued along the way, not realizing. How far we've gone from the Lord. We are just a little bit away from Him. We are not sure how far we have gone from Him. We are not sure how far we have gone from Him. We are not sure how far we have gone from Him. We are not sure how far we have gone from Him. We are not sure how far we have gone from Him. We are not sure how far we have gone from Him. We are not sure how far we have gone from Him. We are not sure how far we have gone from Him. We are not sure how far we have gone from Him. Dus hier keren ons om in ons hart om de Heer te vinden. Guide us by your spirit. Leid ons met uw geest. Fill us with your life. Vul ons met uw leven. Bless this church, Father. Zegen deze gemeente. Fill it with people who are full of Jesus. Vul haar met mensen die vol zijn van Jezus. Bring hungry people from many different places to come here and be fed. Breng hongerige mensen van verschillende plekken weg naar hier om gevoed te worden. Dan we bless this leadership. Dan we zegen de leden van de gemeente. Continue to use them. Blijf hen gebruiken. Lord, not not just in this church. Niet alleen in deze kerk hier. But in all the other areas where they have involvement. Maar op alle gebieden waar ze betrokken zijn. May they always bring Jesus to those situations. May they always bring Jesus in these situations. Father, thank you for these days that we've had. Thank you for the days that we've had together. But Father, we are not more excited over the event than we are with Jesus. Now, we are not more excited over the event than we are with Jesus. The event has been wonderful. The conference was wonderful. But it's Jesus that we want to remember. Maar we willen Jezus onthouden bij deze conferentie. And Father, may may people here forget my name and forget that I ever came, but may they go away with your Son. En ik bid hier dat de mensen mijn naam zullen vergeten en vergeten wie ik ben, maar dat ze Jezus uit de wereld zullen.